Okay, so we've seen a uh, loop. You could also nest loop. We did the init condition post. And this is all part of control flow. So control flow is how does the computer read the code? And computers read code from top to bottom. So a computer enters the Go program where? And starts reading it. In package main, in func main, and when does it leave? When does uh, when does the program end? When it when it exits func main. And so it comes into the code and starts uh, reading the code top to bottom. Comes into func main, right here. Starts reading top to bottom, but then it'll hit things like a loop. So here it hit a loop. And then the control flow is no longer sequential, but now it's iterative. Iterative. Okay. It was going sequence. Right? Or looping. Right? So it's just going in sequence, but now it's looping. And then the other thing that it can do is conditional logic. So it could sequence, it could iterative, or it could do conditional uh, logic. So understanding control flow. So sequence loop conditional. All right? So conditional will be like if i colon equal, sorry, if i is equal to, I don't know, EE's got three, four, five values. If i is equal to three, dump dot print line. Hey, i is equal to i. So that's conditional. Hey, i is equal to three. So we have loops, there's break and continue, so we look at break and continue, x is equal to 1, forever loop, but if x is greater than 100 we're going to break, if x divided by 2 is not equal to 0, meaning it's an odd number, we're going to continue which means stop this loop go back up to the top start the next one so this should print odd numbers even if x divided by 2 is equal to 0 it would continue if it's not equal to 0 so this would print the odd numbers Woo. but if it's not equal to so if x divided by 2 if the remainder of 4 divided by 2, what's the remainder of 4 divided by 2? Zero, right? So zero it not equal to zero, false. We're going to skip that. It's just kind of different logic. Makes more sense to me that way. But I understand that. So that's uh, that's using break and continue in a loop. Printing ASCII, we saw this last week. Oh. We're printing the value i. Here we're getting percent v, which is the value. 
and then a tab, and then percent %x, which is hexadecimal, and then a tab, and then percent %u, which is Unicode, and then a new line. So this is the Unicode. Format printing. We have if statement, if else, if, else if, and else. I guess we should just go through all these. So if, else, and we have if, else if, else, so if x equals 40, do this, else if x equals 41, do this, else, that. We can put all this in a loop. Kind of cool. We can do format print X with no space, just print it out. You can keep doing else ifs all day long. Else if, else if, else if. And then finally else. Then we have switch statements. Maybe we'll look at switch statements in the next video. Or keep going. So switch is kind of like an if statement in control flow. We have switch, and then case false, or case, and then it evaluates that. So that's evaluating on Boolean, whether or not one of these is true. So this is the first true one. And there's no fall through. No default fall through. You have to explicitly state the fall through if you want it to fall through. Meaning most pro programming languages, as soon as they hit true, all of the other cases afterward, afterwards fire. But in Go, it only fires if you explicitly say, hey, fall through and make the rest beyond this fire. So that's a switch case. Switch on these cases. Let's see what funky fall through is. This should not print. This should not print. This prints. And then we fall through. Also, tr also true does it print. Not true one, not true two, true 15. This is default. What happens if we take out one of these fall throughs? Does it stop it? So you have to keep hitting the fall throughs for them to continue falling through.
And then the default case, if nothing else fires, the default case fires, so if none of these were true. And then instead of switching on a bool value, switch case where the case is true, you could switch on a value. So you switch and you say, hey, my value is some, some I have some value. Which one is equal to it? That one is. What will happen now? Yeah, Q should print. What will happen now? What will happen now? What will print now? Yeah, this is default. That's not what I wanted. You could have multiple values, right? So bond is one of these values. What would happen if we had bond here? Tells me I'm looking for the same thing twice. That doesn't make sense. Is it going to tell me I'm looking for the same thing twice now? No, because bond and bond are different. Case matters. And then we have logic operators. Let's see what example I have. What will true and true be? So logic is like, if you clean your room and take out the trash, we could go to ice cream. You got to do both. That's and. If you do this and that, then we can go get the reward. You got to do them both. If you clean your room or if you take out the trash, we could get ice cream. Man, just one of them and we're going for ice cream. You get your choice. So with and, they both have to be true or nothing. I thought you were smiling, Roxanne, because I was giving a familiar example, but you're smiling because there's a man standing here at the window. What's up? Aren't you guys about time to take a break, isn't it? We work all night. Tom Good Collins, night. you're on the internet. Are yeah. you okay with that? I'm on the internet? You're on the internet. Yeah, I don't care. That's not my Say real something. It's not my real name, anyway. Say something uh, outlandish. Oh, we're on the internet right now? You're on the internet right now. See a little green light? They're watching you. Uh, are you having problems with my IT lab in your other classes? <laughs> Always, every semester, <laughs> of course. We're getting errors. We can't, I can't, we can't get into this. I know. Oh. When we have a break, I'll come take a look. Okay. All right. True and true. They both got to be true. True. You, or one of them has to be true. So what's what's true and true? Is it true? Yes. True and false. Is it true or false? False, man, because you got to do them both. That's, we're not doing it. True or true? That's true. True or false? That's true. Not true is false. Redundant and. Redundant or. Go vet exited. Do I only need this now? Has it changed? I don't know why GoVets tell me those are redundant.
Doesn't make sense to me. The code still ran. Go vet. Vet's your code to tell you if you have problems. It's linting. They call it linting. Like taking the lint out of the dryer, cleaning the dryer, getting the little fuzzy bunnies out of the corner. Linting your code is looking for things that could have been written better. So we have true and true is true, true and false is false, true or true is true, true or false is true, and then we have false. That was a longer video. Dear Lord.